Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. I want to thank you for kindly taking away the thing I had Cause it could have hurt me Protection don't feel good in the moment But looking back, wasn't trying to be disrespectful You know I'm stubborn, I never would have let go But trust is hard with a broken heart But with you, I finally learned It felt like you didn't come through for me when you didn't do exactly what I wanted But you always give me what I needed Foolish of me to box you in The shape of my broken heart didn't leave you much room But you always give me what I needed Oh, 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 oh. I don't want to love you who I made you to be Look in my head But I want to love you For exactly who you are And nothing less Cause when I try to piece together My own version You're always there But trust is hard With a broken heart But with you I finally learned I felt like you didn't come through for me When you didn't do exactly what Broken heart didn't leave 
one more time. Felt like you did it. Felt if I'm being honest. You are with me. Foolish of me. Foolish of me. Shape of Heavenly Father, creator of the universe and all that is in this world, we lift up and bless thy holy name. We acknowledge you as our sovereign God. We acknowledge you as our omnipotent God. We acknowledge you as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Gracious and merciful Father, we thank you for the privilege to gather in this virtual space to come away for a while and concentrate on you and on your word. As we listen to the hymns, as we listen to the devotion, we ask, O oh Father, that you will stir up those things in us that will lead to your glory. We ask, O oh Father, that our thoughts and the meditations of our hearts as we listen and as we reflect, that they will be acceptable in thy sight. Father, forgive us for failing to keep our charges. Forgive us, O oh Father, from our tendency to overlook those primary mission fields. Forgive us for our disobedience, our stubbornness, and for leaning on our own understanding. 
We thank you, Lord God, that when we petition your throne, that when we bring our supplications before you, that you are the God who is just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, soften our hearts where they need to be softened. Open our eyes where they need to be opened. Remove the scales from our eyes where they need to be removed. And allow us, O oh Father, to make way for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to have full and complete work in us and in our lives. Father, we pray that we will be strengthened through the power of the Holy Spirit so that we may walk in this world exemplifying that God-centered life in all that we say, in all that we do, and in all that we encourage and support. Father, we thank you for the blessing of our lives the blessing of our families, the blessings of our support system, and the blessing of a church that feeds us with those things that help us in our fight, in our race, and in our labors. Father, bless now, I pray thee, the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When the Spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Speak to us now, Lord, so that we may hear a word directly from you and that we will answer resoundingly. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. Please be seated. When I read the Bible passages that were set for today, I actually started preparing another sermon. And I was repeatedly, or I found myself repeatedly coming back to the lines that you would have heard this morning in the epistle. Be careful how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. And then I went to the Old Testament and saw Solomon. Solomon, who would become the third king of the United Israel. Solomon, who would attain vast wealth and power and physical territory. Solomon, whose reputation would endure to today. Solomon, who was peculiarly blessed and favored by God. And Solomon goes to God in prayer. And God says, well, what do you ask of me, Solomon? And remember that the Bible tells us to pray, to pray without ceasing, and to ask God for what we want. And Solomon, who is a, a leader of territory, Solomon is a king. You would think that Solomon, who is trying to really unify once and for all the 12 tribes into a strong kingdom, would say, I want peace in the kingdom. I want an end to war and battles. Because Solomon, like Saul and like David, had to fight to hold on to the territorial, to the sovereign space of the kingdom of Israel. You might think that he would say to God, I want the people whom I lead to revere me. You might think that he would say, I want more wealth and power. I want to be the best king who has ever lived. There are all kinds of things that Solomon could have asked for, could have prayed for. And Solomon made a simple request. Solomon said, give me wisdom, Lord. Give me wisdom. Give me the spirit of discernment, nothing more. That's all I ask from you. And it made me, it led me to asking myself, what is it that I most ask God for? Do I ask God for financial resources? 
Do I ask God to make my personal relationships better or stronger? Do I ask God to protect the Barbados Labour Party? And I do, make no mistake about that. Do I ask God to keep me in good health? Do I ask God to bless my family? Do I ask God to multiply any wealth that I have? Do I ask God for a long life? And I'm saying, do I, do I, do I, but I mean, do you? What is it that you most ask God for? Because whatever you most ask God for, is what defines you and what defines to a large measure your relationship with God and defines what and determines what God will give you. Because the Bible said that God was so impressed with the purity and the simplicity of Solomon's prayer that he gave him not only what he asked for, but he gave him all the things that he didn't ask for, wealth and power and fame and lands and people who revered him. All of the things that the king could have asked for but didn't, God blessed them with because his simple request to God was to give him wisdom. And I realized, as I put the question to myself, that I've never asked God to give me wisdom. That I've never asked the things that I pray for, those two are not included. And I'm being perfectly honest with you. I asked for all kinds of things. Some spiritual, some political, some material, some familial, but never for wisdom and discernment. And I recognize that insofar as I don't, that there is a deep gap in what I pray for and what I ask God for. Because even as I try to serve God better, even as I seek to be a better Christian and a better preacher and a better person, I don't include wisdom in my prayer. And really, I recognize how absolutely right Solomon was to ask for wisdom because the Bible tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And what does it mean to fear the Lord? When I was growing up, I used to believe that it meant you got to be real frightened for God. And there are still some churches that teach that, that we must approach God afraid. They do not teach the God of love and the God of forgiveness and the God who embraces us all and meets us at our point of need. They teach the God of punishment when God is the God of love. And therefore, the fear of the Lord is to approach God with reverence, with respect, with awe, with an understanding of who God is, and to approach God with absolute love for the infinite love and grace and mercy that he extends to all of us. And so Solomon understood that if he wanted other things, 
that he had to seek first the kingdom of God. And after he did that, all things would be added to him. And so Solomon said, give me wisdom. Because wisdom comes from God. Wisdom comes from the heart and mind of God. Wisdom allows us to connect with that which is uniquely divine. The spirit of discernment is uniquely divine. The capacity to see and to save yourself or others from wrongdoing or danger, the, the capacity or the sensitivity to look at the person who is smiling at you and telling you, yes, I will help you and understanding innately within you because the spirit says it to you, you will not get any help from this person. You are getting only lip service. The spirit of discernment to understand when to speak, what to speak, how to speak, if to speak. The spirit that tells you when to do, how to do, what not to do, if or if not to do. Wisdom, discernment comes directly from God. And this is what Solomon saw, a relationship with God that allowed him to rule wisely. <coughs> a relationship with God that allowed him to discern God's will and God's way and God's intent, a spirit of wisdom and discernment that allowed him to do what was good and what was right, to choose the right path for himself and for his people, to live with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are wisdom and kindness. And at Galatians 5, you will find them. Solomon wanted the wisdom that allowed him to act or manifest the Spirit and the goodness of God. And how we live matters. Because you know, there are people who are concerned only with the life to come. They tell you that they are Christians and everything that you tell them, they disconnect from present realities and tell you when the Lord comes. I left in that to God. Not me, Bozzi, the Lord gonna have to look after that. But life is about living today. It is about the way we live, how we live. It is about living for God. It is about living with God in our hearts and as a result, doing the best for everyone around us. The spirit of wisdom tells us that if you are in a, a Christian, you are to be the best employee, the best boss, the best church member, because you are in the wiggling God. That wisdom should be seen in the way you behave and the way you treat others. Because Christians must recognize that this life is a dress rehearsal for the life to come. And if we cannot get it right or do it right or live it right, then we have no chance at the life to come. How many of you have ever gone to a dress rehearsal? It is like the running of the full show. 
It is a complete immersion of what will happen. Life is a rehearsal for what is to come and preparing us for the life that is to come. But it is real. And it matters how we live. It matters if people can see that you are Methodist, that you are doing no harm, as Wesley tells us not to do, that you are staying in love with God, as Methodists are asked to do. Wisdom and discernment allow us to be active listeners and doers of what is right. And what do I mean by active listening? There are some people, and all of us know people like that. You are having a conversation with them. And before you could finish, they tell you, but. Because they are not listening to anything that you are saying. They are just waiting for you to shut up so that they can give you their opinion. They are just waiting for you to be quiet so they can make an objection. They are just waiting for you to say what we are going to do so that they can tell you why it can't or should it be done and why the church never used to do it that way. They're just waiting for it. They're not listening to you with an open mind and an open heart. They're not listening to you to say, how can we do this? How can we deliver? How can we make it happen? How can we make it better? They are just on pause, waiting for you to shut up. And you see it in many ways. How you feel this morning? You sometimes, you are saying to the person because you have nobody else who will listen to you. You know, I had such a bad morning. Thank you for asking. Glad to hear that because they haven't listened. Has that ever happened to you? That the person says something totally contrary or gives the wrong answer because they were just going through a form. They're not asking, how are you? They really are saying, well, I'm real busy, but I see you, so I got to speak, I gone. We have to be active listeners. And those who are wise are always active listeners. Because when you shut up and listen, it is amazing what people will say. Both good and bad. People will talk out on the cells if you can just stand up and smile for long enough. Active listening comes from wisdom because you want to hear, you want to share, and you want to be able to do. And we need wisdom because the Bible tells us that we are not wrestling day after day only with flesh and blood, but with powers of some of which position themselves in high office and in high places. And you must have discernment, you must have wisdom to protect yourself from being drawn into and drawn in by what is evil. The wisdom helps you to navigate the evil of the day. The days are evil. Are they really? I think so. When you see somebody who is convicted of 34 criminal charges 
in which the chief witness is an admitted prostitute and the person feels that they should occupy the most powerful position on earth. The days have to be evil. When we see one nation, and I want you to be absolutely clear, read your history. The state of Israel and the kingdom of Israel, which we read about in the Bible, the state of Israel today and the ancient Israelites are not the same thing. So that when you see people rise up, try to claim the name of the Israelites, and use it to seek to wipe out another nation off the face of the earth, poison their water, stop food from getting to them, drop bombs on hospitals, kill aid, or aid workers, and other nations of the world turn a blind eye to the suffering of those against whom the genocide is committed and supply the murderers with more bombs and weapons, the days are evil. When we pick up children who are five years old and agree that they could start gender reassignment, what does a five-year-old know about sexuality and sex? We have to be evil. And I am not going to get into arguments of what people do when they become adults. But the Bible tells us that when we harm children, it, we may as well tie a millstone around our neck. Our children should and must be protected. When we see the black on black violence in societies across the world, including here, escalating gun crimes, can we be in any doubt that man to man is so unjust? Can we be in any doubt that there is some form of evil when we see people daily abandoning the principles of God to love one another, to love with our whole heart? When we see people falling away from what is called Jesus' manifesto, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because, because I have come to stop people from being poor, to stop oppression, to heal and to open the eyes of the blind, to give knowledge and wisdom. Discernment. Wisdom allow us to act according to the principles of God. And so the question becomes, because unless you commit suicide, you cannot choose how you will die, when you will die, where you will die, or what you will die from. That is a certainty that we must die. We do not know how, we do not know when, we do not know what from or in what circumstances, but we have the power to choose how we live. And this is why we are told in the scripture to live with wisdom, to live and act wisely, to live and do things that are wise, to live in the example of God, to live in God, for God, so that when we die, we can be with God. 
And at the center of all that is seeking first the kingdom of God. At the center of all that is claiming the wisdom of God. At the center of all that is looking with discernment at the things that are placed before us by both God and people. There are some people who have no purpose in life. If you tell them that Good Friday can come next week, choose the same, say for true earlier to see, it would not matter to them. But as Christians, we are to live purpose-filled and purpose-driven lives. We are to live lives that are God-centered. We are to live lives that are good and lives that are godly. And so, wisdom requires that we put our time to good use. There are some people who cannot tell you what they have done from one day to the next. So often the day comes and we say, wait, the day gone already, but what we do today though? Because we haven't lived purposefully. We haven't lived purposefully. We haven't lived with purpose. There was nothing that we got up that day saying that we absolutely must do one good thing today. Paul, our old godmother, who would be delighted to hear our voice. Tell the old lady in the neighborhood or the old man that you will cook or bring them a meal one day a week. Pick up kerosene for somebody who is still using a kerosene stove or in fact, buy them a new stove. Doing something that makes a difference to the lives of others, doing something that makes a difference in your life, doing something that makes a difference to one of God's children. And so we procrastinate and delay and put off, and we promise, I can call God mommy tomorrow. I go by my grandmother next week. Next weekend, I can go to church. I can't make it this one. But we do not have tomorrow or next weekend put down. My sister and I, my younger sister and I, cannot get over the death of our older sister. It was a Sunday morning. It was the day before the queen was buried. We were in church. It was the anniversary of my father's death. My younger sister and I were in church. We had donated all the flowers at church. And I took pictures of the flowers and sent them to my older sister in London. And I made a commitment that after service, I would tell the bishop that I had decided that I would preach after all if he would agree that I could be a lay preacher in the Methodist church. And so I'm sending her these pictures and she is sending them to the family chat with her children. And my nephew, her oldest son is there. He's in the kitchen with her. She's cooking. She, her cell phone is next to her. She's watching the pictures come in. She's sharing them with him. She is laughing. She's chopping vegetables up. She is looking at all the family members and friends who came to church. She is chatting with him. She starts to sing the hymn, take my life and let it be. And he says, mom. And she says, do not interrupt me while I'm praising God. She had reached about the third verse and she started back from the hymn. My sister could not sing. So he was busy laughing at her. So she starts out, take my life and let her, I can't sing neither, and let it be. She gets to the end of the hymn and drops dead in front of it. Not another word, no goodbye, absolutely nothing. Just drop dead. 
he is medically trained and he recognized that she was falling. He rushed to her and stopped her from hitting the ground. She was dead. Instant. There's nothing wrong with her. She seemed to be in perfect health. She's planning to come to Barbados. What tomorrow are you planning on? What next week do you have put down? Let us try to live purpose-filled lives because the days are evil and we do not know when our time is going to be up. So if you are a Christian, show somebody else that you are a Christian by the way that you live. If you are a Christian, show it to God by the way that you live. Only God holds time in his hands. You and I do not. Be careful, be very careful how you live, not as unwise people. And unwise believe they have time put down. But as wise people making the most of the time because the days are evil. Amen.
thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.